Hello everyone, a very good afternoon to all. Uh, today is the second day of, the, of our webinar. So I heartily welcome everyone to our webinar. I am Subrati Bhattacharji on behalf of Growing Seed Organization. So Growing Seed Organization is a non-profit organization which is based in Tripura. So yesterday our first session was delivered by Dr. Bipin Kumar on different aspects of water, rainwater harvesting and its utilization. And today we are continuing its second part on which is based on around the year fodder production and conservation, a methodological approach for livestock farming. This session will be delivered by Dr. Rakesh Kumar. Dr. Rakesh Kumar is currently employed at ICR National Dairy Research Institute as a principal scientist and he is an expert in uh, fodder crops, its production and conservation practices. So I welcome Dr. Rakesh Kumar to this webinar. Thank you, Subradeep. I also thank you the organization Growing Seeds for organizing this webinar. And uh, I also welcome all the participants and uh, thank you the organizers for selecting this topic and uh, this seminar for this seminar. As we know, the livestock is an important and integral part of the Indian agriculture. And uh, the livestock population in India is around 15% of the world's livestock is available in India. And that is only only 2% of the geographical area. And further, if we see the cultivated fodder crops area, which is very much limited, that is around 8 million hectares which is coming around the 5% of the total cultivated fodder crops. And it is very much static from last three, four, five decades. It is same. But the importance of green fodder is very much in this uh, era of this commercial, um, considering the activity as a commercial activity, commercial dairy farming, commercial livestock. Since most of the cost of any livestock production system if we talk about the milk production system, the feeding only accounts 60 to 70 percent of the total cost of the milk production. So we have to, if we want to make it profitable, we have to reduce it. And for this reduction, we have to be based on the green fodder based feeding since green fodder is cost effective and it is easily digestible and it gives response very fast. Response time is very fast. If we start the green fodder feeding from today, morning, the results will be appear in the evening itself in its milking or in other products. So there is need to have a round the year availability of the green fodder for this livestock farming, dairy farming particularly. But presently the country is having deficit and dear participants and managers, please see that my slides are visible. Slides are visible. So the fodder production in the country is not sufficient because the area is limited. So if we see the deficit at present country has a net deficit of around 35% of the green fodder, around 11% of the dry crop residues also and furthermore the 44% concentrated feed ingredients are deficient in our country. And this gap will further rise due to the consistent growth of the livestock population, which is growing at the rate of 1 to 1 to 3 percent. So to maintain the round the availability, good quality fodder in good quantity, we have to meet out this deficit. Green fodder for a supply has to grow at a growth rate of 1.69 percent. But there are several constants in increasing this forest production in our country. The lower area and lower production of these crops can also be explained on the basis of our increased human population, which forced us to maintain more grown grain crops and to grow more grain crops. In the Green Revolution also, because we want to feed our population first, human population first, we have given many importance to the grain crops and the fodder crops, crops were sidetracked. So 
further the productivity or lower productivity of these crops can be extended on the basis of the non adoption of the production technology of these forest crops here you can see that if you see the commercial crops like wheat rice sugarcane and other crops which farmer consider as a commercial the farmer adopts the things very fast but in case of the forest crops farmer doesn't adopt these things because it uh, farmer doesn't consider it as uh, a commercial activity but in the era when we want to consider the livestock farming when we want to consider the dairy farming as a commercial activity and this uh, commercial activity this dairy farming is having 60 to 70% feeding expenditure for the poor further the livestock farmers are small and they are unable to adopt the high uh, production technologies and one of the major cause of this uh, non availability of the fodder is the regional imbalances if you see the dry fodder availability in punjab and haryana is very high and farmers are sometimes burning it and it creates environmental problems also and on the second hand the high transportation cost that leads to the regional imbalances of this for availability one of the main other main point or main constraint in this forest production is availability of the quality seed of forest crops if we talk of the other crops seed of so many varieties depending upon the situation is available but in case of the fodder crops the availability of the seed is very much poor so how to increase how to improve the quality increase the production of these for crops and how to enhance the livestock productivity dairy productivity it will depend upon the growing of the cultivated forest crops mainly these are bajra maize cowpea nepher into bajra hybrid jowar etc during summer months or creep periods likewise in winter we have to go for growing lucerne barsim oats and barley here i want to give an emphasis on the fact that if we want to go for a commercial type of the livestock farming dairy farming we have to grow cultivated species with good agronomic management options available with us in that particular climatic situation so we have to be dependent on these cultivated species so however we will take care of the fodder trees fodder grasses etc on the lands which are marginally marginal or poor lands but on the better quality lands we have to go for growing these cultivated crops with the better agronomic managements if we see this crop this is a maize crop a fodder crop just 65 days old crop on a farmer's field itself if we see the situation of the crop it is very excellent crop only because of the fact that this farmer has adopted all the agronomic practices with sowing time planting density cultivars or the selection of the variety crop mixtures and crop rotations nutrient management that is fertilizer management or the nutrient which has to be added how it has to be added its water management weed management and finally the harvesting management was done by the farmer in a very efficient way here i want to emphasize that for the round the year for is availability for the availability or that to the ground green for the availability we have to maintain all these agronomic practices from sowing time to the harvesting so as to have better quality and higher production both the things per unit area and per unit time so the audience are from all over india so they have to consider their own agro, own agro climatic situation they have to consider their own package of practices developed for their area for that they can contact the local krishi vigyan kendra or the agriculture department normally most in most of the states we have dda office deputy director agriculture office from there they can get the local package of practice recommended package of practice of all the crops suitable for that particular district so among these crops select your forest crops and grow them with the practices given in that particular 
so in my coming part of this um, presentation i will take one by one things first sowing time then plant density nutrient management and so on so forth but i will explain the importance of these factors in from both angles the enhancement on the yield or the production and improvement in the quality also so first take the sowing time each and every crop have its particular sowing window the sowing window of the some of the crops has been given in this slide which is kharif ravi and summer crops and several crops has been listed so you can see there here i want to emphasize that based upon the result of one of the experiment this experiment was based on the maize crop taken at karnal situation in which four sowing dates were taken four sowing windows were taken 15 august then at 20 days interval crop was sown the growing degree day a index an index for measuring uh, the temperature requirement of the particular crop for reaching to a particular stage the growing degree day requirement for 50% flowering stage of the maize that is har harvesting stage of the maize crop is around 1250 units but if we delay the sowing from 15 august to 15th october the growing degree days attained by the crop during both the years of the study 2014 and 15 they will they were reduced to the half means the temperature requirements were not met out if we go for delayed sowing ultimately it will affect the yield which can be seen in this slide if we see the yield at 15th august it was around 54 million tons of per hectare but on 15th october it is only 8 tons per hectare so there is drastic reduction dear participants you can say that maize can be grown in winters surely but that is winter grain crop for grain purpose for fodder purpose maize is not taken in uh, winter seasons only in southern part of the country you can go for maize as a fodder in winter seasons also so this is the importance of this proper sowing window of any crop second factor comes the plant density here i want to discuss a myth or a, a misconception of a farmer that if we use farmer is having misconception that if i will use higher the seed rates or higher plant density per unit area then there will be lower um, there will be higher yields and better quality the plant observed that um, the observed of, um, observation of the plant at that stage is succulent thin stem plant farmer thinks that it is very much digestible no it is no digestible it is having more lignin content these are the recommended plant densities these are recommended and better plant densities proper plant densities but if we go for higher than the recommended for example in this case of this maize the recommended seed rate is around 50 to 60 kg per hectare but when we reached when we used higher plant densities in an experiment conducted at karnal itself we found that the lignin which is a undigestible fiber fraction the portion of lignified portion is increased even if the individual stem is thin so we have to use the plant densities at proper recommended level to have better digestible fodder quality further the chances of enhancement in the toxic substance particularly nitrate toxicity is more when we use higher plant densities at higher plant density more number of plants will be there and we all know the plant has to absorb nitrogen from the soil only in the form of the nitrate except some exceptions in case of the rice early stage this nitrate has to be converted further into the protein for utilization in the further processes or as harvest by the animals but when the higher the, the plant density is higher the lower portion of the crop will remain shaded and having availability of the lesser solar light for the photosynthesis ultimately lesser energy will be available for conversion of nitrate to protein so accumulation of nitrate will be more in that fodder and that results into the sometime death of the over dairy or livestock animals 
So by using single factor wrongly, higher gland density, we have to pay more for the sheet. We have chances of increased lignin content in the fodder. Chances of toxicity are also there. So we have to follow this practice very well. These are the sum of the nutrient requirements. Here I want to say that nutrient requirement for any of the fodder group has to be analyzed based on the site specific soil testing results. Otherwise, we will not able to provide proper nutrition to the, the that growth. So these are general recommendations given in this presentation, but we have to see the our own soil testing report. Based on that, we have to apply the nutrients needed by the crop. Here by this pictorial presentation, this graphic presentation, I want to say that this nutrient management and other factors are not acting independently. This factors, this paragraph, this graph shows that the seed rate and fertility levels have a negative interaction. If we use higher seed rates, the utilization of the fertilizer levels applied to the crop is lower. From this graph, graph itself, it is indicative that at lower plant densities at 60 kg per hectare plant per, per hectare, the efficiency of applied nutrient is obtained up to the level of 125% of the recommended dose, whereas it is reduced up to the level of 50% or 75% level in case of the higher plant populations. And there is a crossover negative interaction was observed. So to have better utilization of the applied nutrients to the crop, we have to use proper plant densities. Dear participants, these are the few of the results. The higher the plant density, lower will be the CP content in the crop, lower will be the ether extract, that is fat percentage in the crop, higher will be the fiber fractions like ADF, ADL, and NDF, etc. So higher plant density is not required. Likewise, the fertilizer levels are also affecting the things in a positive manner. Within this nutrient management, next factor comes micronutrients. If we remember the time of independence, soils of India at that time were deficient only about one nutrient, that is nitrogen. But by the intensive cultivation, by the uh, continuous cultivation of the different crops on the different soils and different parts of the country, nowadays we can see that in the country the number of deficient nutrients in the soil are increasing up to 9 or 10 in, depending upon the different areas. So to have the importance, to show the importance of this factor, I am giving an example of zinc micronutrient. Around 50 to 60 percent soils of the India are deficient in zinc. And we, as we know, the zinc is required for nutrition of the plant as well as for animals, as well as for human also. So this concept of feeding the soil will help not only in reducing, uh, improving the yield and quality of the forages, it will also reduce the malnutrition of the humans also. If we apply the desired quantity of the inputs as we done in this experiment, the yield will be higher, the quality will be better and ultimately animal will get enriched fodder, animal product will be better and that will be also enriched in this nutrient and ultimately human will get the animal products rich in those micronutrients. So here is need to apply these micronutrients based upon soil testing reports in different soil situations, soil and agroclimatic situations. These are further effects. Zinc has improved, zinc application has improved the CP content, ether extract and the mineral content of the fodder and it has lowered down the different fiber fractions. Next point comes the cultivars. Here also, there is a myth among the farmers, take any seed, grow it, in, put it into the soil and it will give us fodder. No, definitely it will give, give some fodder, but not up to the quality, not up to the production, higher at, at a higher level of the production. So we have to select the cultivars which are suitable for higher yields as a fodder yield, not grain yield. So there is difference between grain and fodder varieties. The grain varieties are having longer duration, fodder varieties are having shorter duration, fodder varieties are having uh, more leafy areas, more leaf to stem ratio, 
and the grain varieties are having um, stiff leaves erect leaves so as to harvest for solar radiation for longer period so dear participants and dear farmers or the participant of the seminar we have to convey the message to the farmer that we have to use only varieties suitable for fodder production for this forest crops these are the few of the examples few of the varieties listed for this and among these varieties particular varieties are suitable for particular agro agroclimatic situation we have to see our local package of practice booklet as i indicated in a, at a very initial stage in my presentation that you have to take your own package of practice booklet so that you can have the your area site specific climate specific package of practice for the production of that particular fodder crop further the varieties like quality protein maize variety in maize which are rich in lysine and tryptophan they can also be included in this livestock um, feeding and from an experiment conducted during this uh, winter period it is observed that these varieties are giving at par yield with the, those of the fodder varieties dear participants next point comes crop mixture and rotations as we all know crop mixer legume and cereals crop rotations they are having beneficial effect from soil improvement from environmental improvement for better utilization of the resources from animal point of view i want to explain or say few points animals are also having diverse need they need carbohydrates they need proteins if you have a mixture of cereals and legumes legumes will give better proteins and cereals will give us carbohydrates so their mixture will provide balanced ration likewise micronutrients legumes are rich in multivalent or bivalent ions whereas cereals are rich in monovalent ions it is because of their behavior it is because of their behavior of the root system root system of the legume crops is rich uh, is having high cation exchange capacity so have preference of the multivalent ions over monovalent and vice versa in case of the cereal crops so if we grow these both the crops in mixture the animal will get both monovalent and bivalent multivalent ions in balanced ration so this is the importance of crop mixture from animal point of view also in in, uh, in addition to the soil benefits and the other environmental and nutrient utilization benefits these are the few of the crop rotations for different agroclimatic situation of the country if we talk of the hilly areas that is eastern zone there we can use the crop rotations like maize intercropped with cowpea followed by teosin intercropped with rice bean for here we can take one or two cut in winter barsim plus chinese cabbage that is mustard we can take three to four cuts by this way we can have around the year for it several other options were also available here in this presentation the audience and the participants can see them also weed management here again a myth weeds are also grasses that can be fed to the animal they will also provide animal a good quality of the fodder no if we talk about weed weed means unwanted plant we want to grow fodder crops if there is any weed in between the fodder crop that will definitely reduce the yield and quality both in terms of the digestibility in terms of the all point of the consideration so we have to control and we have to manage these weeds up to the lower level so that the crop growth and quality may not be hampered of the particular forage crops these are few of the chemical recommendation for some of the crops like maize sorghum and winter crops also oats and barley last but not least point of the harvest management harvest management is the factor this decides again production and quality so for most of the crops we have to harvest these crops at 50% flowering stage 50% flowering means if we observe our field 
50 percent of the plant population in our field must have blown out their flowers if we harvest the forest before the period the fodder content my fodder will contain less dry matter and more water content animal will eat more and more but it uh, animal will remain hungry and the requirement of nutrients will not be fulfilled on the other hand if we delay from this stage we, we have to uh, the fodder can will contain more of the undigestible fiber fractions so it is the proper stage of the harvesting is 50 percent flowering stage at this stage all the micronutrients like crude protein fiber fractions they are at better qualities so dairy farmer has to harvest the crop at this proper harvest stage for this purpose we can think of the one more thing divide the whole field into at least two three parts and do the sowing in staggered stages so that we can have most of the times best stage of the harvesting so these are the few of the harvesting stages suitable for different crops so in summary of the my first part that is forage production is green fodder is the cheapest source so as to reduce the cost of the feeding and use the recommended package of the practice of fodder crops of your area and adopt the pop as in the case of the commercial crops jesa as we do in commercial crops we have to follow the activity in package practice in this forage crops also every practice has its influence on both yield and quality so follow them properly and accurately use crops crop rotations mixers as per the suitability of your area so here we have discussed till now the round the year fodder production how to maintain the round the year fodder production of the different crops what are the different practices different agronomic management options which can be helpful in maintaining these round the year fodder availability in the second part i will start and join my second part with the first part even if we adopt all the package of practices we may not get round the year fodder production even in the better management all best management options we will have two glut seasons when the availability of the fodder will be more than the requirement and two lean periods availability of the green fodder will remain lesser than the requirements the lean periods are may june in summer and november december in winter the glut seasons are august september in summer and february march in the so to have a balance between these two glut and lean periods we have to conserve this additional forage is available during glut seasons and utilize it into the lean periods so by this way also we are able to maintain around the year good quality of the refuges for the as we know the production remain unaffected by this by the feeding of this conserved forage forages as silage or hay so we have to conserve these forages during the glut seasons in the form of either hay or silage first i will discuss about the silage every management program should have essential practice of for for conservation either as silage or hay silage can be prepared in any type of the climatic conditions but hay we can prepare in the dry areas only so silage is an added advantage over hay also so before going to the package of practice or the practices of the silage production we must think that what are the characteristics of the good quality silage it can be identified based on the two things first thing is color green its color must be green to yellowish why it will be green to yellowish we are har- we are going to harvest the green fodder and we are preserving it so green fodder may change into yellow color in by a natural course natural process so our best quality silage should have color range in between greenish to yellowish likewise the smell 
second parameter is smell it should be of vinegar type of the smell if we have any other smell any other color we can think that the silage is destroyed or damaged further it is a very simple technique just like pickle making technique in our homes in our households it is not difficult for farmers to grasp the technique of the silage making and you is anyone can use it successfully it is very simple so i if i say it simple what are the simple two three practices we have to do we have to go to field itself harvest the crop at proper harvesting stage that is 50% flowering stage then chaff it into the small pieces then put it into a container or that is silo pit and then compress it expel the air so as to remove the oxygen from the from it and then cover it and put it for 45 days around 35 to 45 days and then anyone can open it and feed to the animals this is very simple harvest the fodder chaff it put it into container and compress it and cover it that's all it is very simple process anyone can do it but this process will be explained in foregoing slides one by one this is theoretical definition of the silage silage is a method of feed resource preservation which is based on the removal of air particularly oxygen from a mass of the feed to promote the fermentation of the sugar to sugar means soluble carbohydrates to lactic acid so as to have reduced ph so as to have acidic ph of meat and this acidic ph will further reduce the enzymatic activity of the ovary so have a stable silage so dear participants dear friends whenever you will search this so about silage you will find stable silage but along with the silage stable silage stability will only come when the micronutrient and enzymatic activity will be stopped and it will only stop when the acidic ph will be created acidic ph will only be created by the conversion of soluble sugar into the lactic acid by lactic acid bacteria and lactic acid bacteria will only act when there is anaerobic situation so we have to remove the air from this silo silos very effectively otherwise silage will not be prepared in a good quality when we talk of the silage making the first point will come which are the crops suitable for silage making as it is clear from the definitions the crop must be rich in soluble sugar fermentable sugar so as to have better quality of the better quantity of the lactic acid for the second point the crop should have lower level of the protein and low buffering capacity why lower level of protein if the protein level is higher then buffering capacity capacity will also be more if if the buffering capacity will be more definitely the ph will not be lower down if the ph will not be lower down the activity of microbes will not be stopped and it will damage the silage so the crop should have lower protein content and low buffering capacity and it should have an ideal dry matter content at the ensiling time that is around 35% of the dry matter so keeping in this criteria excellent silage may be made from the crops like jowar bajra maize oats and barley or we can say the cereal crops are most most suitable the grasses belonging to gramini family or cereal uh, this these are also suitable for silage making sometime a question is asked whether we can mix these crops definitely we can mix these crops no problem but we have to prefer cereal crops for silage making because these are rich in carbohydrates particularly soluble carbohydrates which is required for making uh, lactic acid to convert the ph into the acidic sides but legumes are least suitable or not suitable for the silage making the beginners should not use legumes though the experienced silage maker can use these crops legumes crops in a balanced ratio by mixing with this cereal crops next point comes at what stage we have to harvest these crops these crops should be harvested at the stage which has been explained earlier in the fodder production part 
it should be harvested at 50 percent flowering stage only not beyond that not early to that and second parameter which is to be considered for silage making it is its dry matter content at that harvesting time the crops, crops should have 30 to 35 percent dry matter and 65 to 70 percent of the moisture content so the lactic acid conversion and activity of the microbes will be stopped there in such type of the situations so crops should be harvested at right dry matter content and right stage of the harvesting next point comes the silos silos are of different types such as pit silo tower silo tent silo and out of these different type of the silo tent silos are mostly recommended because various operations filling compressing air expulsion etc are easy and we can easily move into this tense type of this silo pit second point is to be considered is the number of corners the silos which are having least number of the corners are most suitable round corner or circular pits are most suitable because more the corners more will be the chances of retention of the air into it if air will be retained the activity of lactic acid bacteria will not be there or prime m is air expulsion so as to improve the activity enhance the activity of lactic acid bacteria to produce more and more lactic acid to reduce the ph of the silo medium so as to reduce the further enzymatic activity and microbial activity in this silo pit and making a stable silos stable silage so there must be least corner and trench type of the silo pit are most suitable second point comes what should be the ideal size of the silo pit here i have mentioned that a silo pit measuring 3 meter length 2.5 meter width and 2 meter depth is convenient for making silage or feeding five dairy animals at the rate of 20 kg silage per head per day for the period of three months but here we can have a very simple formula take your number of animal multiply it with the period of lean period or the period for which you want to make silage and multiply it with the daily requirement of a high yielding good quality animal requirement since the green food requirement will be replaced by the silage during the silage feeding so and multiply all these things and divide it by 650 650 is what 650 kg of the silage can be contained by a container of 1 cubic meter so by this simple calculation we can calculate the silo pit size of our herd or, or of our commercial dairy farm or our dairy farm rather we can say after calculating this size we have to think that we should not go for making a single silo pit we have to prepare at least two to three silo pit divide this size into two to three since once uh, one of the major principle which i want to share with you the filling time of the silage silo pit as well as utilization time of the silo pit after opening should be minimum as far as possible there is no limit but it should be minimum as far practical position allow us so if we use two three silo pits we can fill them fastly and we can utilize the material quickly or in uh, early times so that the um, during that time the other silo pits remain intact and their silo silage will be remain in a good quality so silo pit size can be calculated by this formula very simple formula number of animal multiplied by number of days for which you want to make silage multiplied by the daily consumption of the silage by animal divide it by 650 it will give us requirement in cubic meter divide it into two three parts and make the silo pits here i want to also want to indicate that make the silo pits simply by using bricks and uh, RCC materials and then start them filling of the silo pit. Silo pit is to be filled by chaffed material, not by whole harvested fodder. The material has to be chaffed in the pieces of 2.5 to 4 centimeter. If it is possible, you have to use 
two sizes of the silo, um, this chopped material. So we, we can uh, remove air very well. And the compaction will be better in two different sizes of the silo, uh, this chopped materials. Further, at the time of insiling, there must be proper diameter content, as I have indicated earlier also. And once layer by layer, we have to compress it by suitable equipments like roller, like other machineries. And when it will become dome shaped, we have to fill it with SDPE sheets. Why SDPE sheets? If we use PVC sheet, they will be damaged by light or the sunlight in one season only or maybe mm, before that. So SDP is resistance to sunlight. We have to use high density polyethylene sheets to cover it and cover it so in a, in a manner that no air should enter into the silo pit. And after that, we have to regularly take care of the pit and no water should enter into it and uh, if there is any space or any chance of air entering into the pit we have to take care regularly of the pit one more question comes about the additives and preservatives which are to be added in a silo pit in silage materials we can have some additives which additives are those materials which are adding some quality or some nutrients into it like molasses, we can add ground maize, ground barley, we can add into the silo pits. But here we have to think that for silage making, these are not an essential part, these are desirable part. If we are adding these items into the silo pit during the insiling process, we have to reduce these items from their feeding schedule during that lean period in which we will feed it. So otherwise, animal will be overfed. Likewise, preservatives, we can use common salt at the rate of 18 to 20 kg of the common salt per ton of the insulated material, sodium metabisulfate 5 kg, dilute acetic acid 10 liters or phosphoric acid 6 kg per ton of the insulated material can be used as a preservative. But if we don't remove the air, if we are unable to remove the air effectively and adding preservative, it will not work. Preservative will help us. But the essential requirement is removal of the air that has to be taken due care but the beginners can take this help of these preservatives also so that the quality of the silage will not be tempered. There may be some losses during the silage process but since as we know this silage will be available during the lean periods and silage is equally good as that of the green fodder. So we have to think that silage with some losses we can consider. Some evaporation losses, some nutrient losses, sometimes air may enter and may cause some losses. In general, 5 to 10 percent losses are acceptable and there is no problem. Nutrient value of the silage is sometimes better, better in comparison to the green fodder. As in the case of the sorghum bajra, which are sometimes rich in some toxic substances like this HCN and oxalic acids, this silage fermentation period is helping us in this. So good quality should have green to yellowish color, vinegar type of the smell, a normal uh, pH should be ranged between 4.5 to 5 and ammonical nitrate should not be there and other acid should not be there but lactic acid should be in between 3 to 12 percent days and feeding of the silage should be started slowly gradually and animal is to be offered silage in replacement of the green fodder slowly slowly second option comes hay making hay making is the conservation of the high quality forages by drying it in the dry environment Hay making is not possible in humid climates sometimes. So here the principle is we are reducing the moisture content to the level of the 10 to 20 percent so as to inhibit the enzymatic activity of the plants and it will be con converted. So I will not go in much detail about hay. The crops suitable for hay making are again the crops which are 
thin stemmed and pliable like the sorghum or guinea grass grasses are more suitable the leguminous forages like uh, having higher protein contents are also more suitable, more suitable for this hay making but we have a limitation with hay making in hay making hay from high quality forages the biggest drawback is loss of the valuable leaves in handling leaves are lost sometimes so if you are able to protect the leaf loss then there is no problem in hay making but it is a limitation with hay with the loss of the leaves large fraction of the proteins in the crop is lost particularly in case of the legumes and this problem is not so bad in case of the non legumes so we can go for making hay of the maize sorghum napier and grasses also so do care has to be taken by this so in summary we can say that surplus green herbages which are available at flush season or glut season can be stored converted uh, conserved preserved with minimum losses of the nutrients and they can be utilized during the lean periods when the availability of fresh forages is negligible or misery so preservation of the forage fodder crops is important in round the year availability of the quality forages for sustainable dairy productions it is suitable for all type of the production system small big commercial subsistence fodder cultivation practices are suitable for all the systems and at all the mechanization levels we can go for for conservation so thank you very much if you have any query and you can take a note of this contact numbers and the emails i will be ready for serving you all thank you the organizers and thank you all participants for listening me during the two part of the presentations uh thank you dr rakesh kumar sir for this uh, info informative and such kind of valuable information you have discussed in this uh, webinar so now we got some questions from the participants side and uh, quite uh, many questions some of this question has already been covered under this discussion only the question which has not been discussed uh, in this um, discussion i will address these questions only so the first question yes. is that uh, nowadays many people are talking about cactus as a green fodder so how about it is there any scope for cultivation of cactus in india as a uh, forage crop or is there any anything can be done regarding yes. this yes subradeep i want to yes. add few more things also here cactus like uh, this uh, uh, other alternative sources uh, i forgot this in, in rice what we are growing subradeep help me yes sir in rice which fodder in rice which fodder we are growing in rice 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 fields yes sir so anyway come to the cactus cactus can be used as a fodder as a alternate source of fodder in the areas where we can grow it easily the climatically suitable areas where cactus can be grown it can be taken as a uh, thornless cactus varieties are available and the um, participants can see the um, uh, i think material will be available on the website of the cssri some of the scientists working at csri karnal on this uh, non thorny cactus for utilization as a for crops so it can be utilized okay sir uh, thank you and uh, another question we got that uh, what should be the approach when it comes to bare minimum fodder production practice means uh, with bare minimum uh, inputs like fertilizers and other practices how can a farmer grow forage crop without a uh, very minimum resource available subradeep so, uh, very right question but it is we have to think that whether we want to go for subsistence type of the dairy farming continuously or we want to go for commercial dairy farming if we want to consider the dairy farming as a commercial activity as i discussed earlier explained very well earlier we have to consider the forage crops as a commercial activity and we have to take care of these crops in a commercial manner so have to have higher production but even then if the some farmers are having very 
poor lands so under such type of the lands they can go for some cultivation of the tree like moringa cultivation like this cultivation of the grasses or some legume grasses depending upon the area specific grasses or so that they can have some green fodder around the year so definitely there are options available but for commercial dairy farming we have to cultivate these crops including grasses or trees in a very effective or scientific manner so that um, the fodder quality as i has discussed very well that if we harm harm uh, grow the crops in a very um, poor management system the chances of anti quality factors and lower quality will be there so we have to take care of these crops as a commercial crops okay sir so another question uh, actually a particularly very interesting question is is there anything to do with the planting direction or uh, whether any particular planting direction is helpful for uh, getting better yield or any kind of these things in fodder production planting direction has any effects planting direction it should be in between lining we have to grow the forest crops in lines but if you see the situation in field in even in the district like karnal or in the area like karnal haryana and punjab farmers are still using broadcasting methods no we have to grow the crops in a line to line spacing manner in a north to south direction so that we can harvest the solar radiation in a more effective way and the other practices like the mechanization can be possible in this uh, line sowing and other otherwise in broadcasting method simple the, the chances of the application of these uh, high agronomic practices will not be possible okay sir another important uh, question we received that uh, what is the best method and practices for fodder production in very dry regions like rajasthan what a farmer can do to grow this uh, fodder crops in rajasthan in dry condition actually in dry conditions we can see that we have to the sowing time we have to sow the crop since the irrigation source is only rainfall yes sir. if we uh, sow the crop at a time at a minimum elapse of the time as for example if we receive rain today we have to try to sow the our crop in two days itself or rather if it is possible by this uh, uh, forecasting mechanism uh, we can so go for dry sowing of these crops so that each and every drop of the harvest in this rain will be utilized further the selection of the crops for example lucian it is more suitable for dry areas but if farmer go for barsin it will not suitable for those areas since we know the lucian is having deep root system so select the crops select the varieties which are having drought resistance or manage the practices time of the sowing according to the rainfall pattern so that we can have better and second thing we have to be based on some tree harvesting like prosopis cinerarea in the, the deserts so that we can have good quality forages from these trees syrups also can be grown so the multiple type of the activities we have to take okay sir thank you uh, another question uh, which we received is if any dairy farmer suppose a dairy farmer is there who doesn't have any kind of limitation resource limitation so what should be the best forage crop which he can obtain or grow in his field which is the there best is no crop limitation. yes yes if there is no limitation during summer and kharif seasons starting from march to september 5th as i indicated in my one of the slide maize is the best crop why maize is best it is the crop which is giving us maximum production per unit time per unit area and it is the crop which can be harvested at any period of time at any stage without being toxic it is not having toxic substance at any stage of harvesting so maize is the best crop but condition is that farmers should not have any limitation of water logging water store shortage there should be no, not be any water stress if there is chances 
or there is possibility of water stress, then we must not go for single crop of the maize. We can grow for maize in some area and we can go for diverting some other area towards this uh, sorghum and bajra, some hardy crops, so that we can have all the crops. It is one of the foremost request is that even if we have all the best facilities available, we have to divert all the area towards the different crops, not to the single crop in the as we see in different years, the growth behavior of the different crops is different. In some years, some crop is better performing, in another, another crop is better. So we have to divert, use all the crops in the single crop. But if you no limitation, maize is the best crop for stall feeding, for conservation also. So go for maize in, during this period and during winters, these farmers can go for bursim and uh, oats like these crops. So, sir, another question. Uh, I think it is from any progressive farmer, any uh, one progressive farmer that uh, from where we can get that uh, salt -toler tolerant varieties of forage crops. Salt tolerant varieties, sir. So, um, I have requested the all the participants that each variety is recommended for particular area. And each variety is recommended for particular area means the seed of that variety will be available in that area only. So please go for your package of practice booklet from your local office, local agriculture offices, local Karshivyan Kendra or some other source and see what are the varieties recommended. Then ask these departments, ask the um, NSC and other organizations which are busy in this seed business and ask the private companies so we have to select the variety from over oven if there is salt tolerant variety suitable for that particular area then definitely that will be available in that area only otherwise nobody will sell these variety in whole of the country so think like this okay sir uh, one question came that uh... Would Moringa increase milk production quality in lactating dairy cattle? Can we use uh, Moringa for to feed the lactating dairy cattle to increase their milk yield quality? People are working on these lines. People are working on the improvement in the quality of the milk. People are also working in the quality of uh, semen or you can say the quality of the bulls. So, but even then, if we see the nutrient profile of this Moringa, the digestibility coefficient of the different nutrients of the Moringa and use of the Moringa in human nutrition also. So there is definitely several benefits which are listed in one or other literature. Definitely they will give benefit to the animals also. So we can incorporate Moringa plantation as a tree plantation or we can go for alternative um, uh, Close spacing moringa cultivation for forage purposes. Experiments are still going on under Indian conditions also, but definitely moringa is having very much beneficial effect on human health as well as they were reported by several scientists uh, working on different uh, conditions. So we can use it. Okay, sir. Uh, Experiments are still going on. Okay, sir. Uh, as now the summer season is going on, uh, what should be some of the management practices to for the feeding of uh, day, uh, livestock in this summer condition? As, uh, as we can see that uh, in this season, summer season, uh, many of the animals go through this summer stress or heat stress. So what should be the our strategy to feed the animals in case of the forage crops? Yes, yes. so mm, your question is having two parts. One is nutrition yeah. management or livestock production management part. That is keep the animals in shady areas, provide them plenty of the waters. But from forest point of view, during summer periods, if you are going to harvest the crop like bajra and sorghum, take care that the oxalates and HCN content are not there in that crop. Not there in that crop. If the crop is having water deficit, Chances, water deficit means water stress. Chances of these anti-quality factors are there. 
so before harvesting crops in these periods apply some irrigation to the crop and then harvest these crops second if the problem is of this um, this uh, anti quality factors is not available and we have ensured that through our management options then provide plenty of the green fodder during this period so as to the so as the water requirement will also be fulfilled through, through this green fodder of the animal and this stress can be minimized in the animals also and ultimately productivity will be better further this cow pea and rice beans the summer season uh, legume forages they should be fed in balanced ration and or i should recommend they should be grown in the crop it's field itself with the cereal crops so they will help in soil management they will help in animal management also in during the summer periods by providing protein in more quantities okay thank you dr rakesh kumar sir for this wonderful presentation as well as this question and answer session uh, you have uh, completed all the enquiries we got from that participants side and uh, as from we are seeing from that uh, youtube uh, comment section this people are quite happy with that information thank you once again sir now coming thank to the so participants uh, now coming to the participants then many question many people have asked the what about that certificate so we will definitely provide certificates to the all the uh, participants who have registered through that google form we published earlier but uh, to make this certificate it will take a little bit of time i think uh, one week to two weeks to make this uh, happen and after that uh, after the process got completed we'll upload this certificate somewhere in google drive or whatever else or we can uh, send it directly to you through your email id so thank you everyone for attending this uh, live webinar uh, two days long live webinar which was based on rainwater harvesting as well as uh, as forage crop uh, production as well as in conservation so i want to thank you all the participants as well as the team members of growing seed society who ma successfully managed all this uh, i mean that a big process to organize this such kind of thing from a such a distance as well as the network issue is also there so despite of all these things it was a great success and i hope that people will stay with us in future also as we have an other i mean programs going on and we'll arrange such kind of webinar in future also thank you all thanks once again